you're Emmanuel, you're the great I am, you're the Prince of Peace, who is the Lamb, you're the living God, you're my saving grace, you will reign forever, you are ancient of days, you are Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, you're my Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, and Friend, you're my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. one to three. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am calling on you constantly. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good and so ready to forgive and so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you. 
whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. No pagan god is like you, O Lord. None can do what you do. All the nations you made will come and bow before you, Lord. They will praise your holy name, for you are great and perform wonderful deeds. You alone are God.
let me get my Bible open here. No, I think I got it. Uh, so first I just wanted to read a quick little section out of Matthew 19. Um, it's just a really quick little blurb in here entitled the, uh, the Ch- Little Children in Jesus, but it's, it's, you know, it's in the Bible, it's important, and it directly correlates to what we're going to be doing here in a minute. So, uh, then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. And so, um, children are obviously extremely important to Jesus. They're extremely important to us in our daily lives. And so, again, this is just an opportunity for us as a church family to come alongside and recognize those. So, today we have Brooks and Shannon um, and Jake, and we're going to be offering them an opportunity. What? Jack. See, I knew I was going to mess that up. I'm so bad with names. I would ask for grace in that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, children are a blessing from the Lord, and, and babe, we also want to recognize baby dedication is not baptism. Um, that is something that he will hopefully at some point in his life make as a decision for himself. This is more recognition for the parents that they are making a public um, commitment or dedication to raise their child um, in this way. So I think I'm going to go ahead and invite Brooks and Shannon up. And... Um, I'm going to give them each an opportunity to share if, if they feel so inclined. Hi, this is Jack Gleckner, Jack Lee Gleckner. He was born December 14th last year. He was born six, uh, six pounds and 14 ounces. He didn't cry when he was first born. That's obviously changed. Um, <laughs> He loves food and music, and what Brooks and I want for him is um, an identity rooted in Christ's love for him, security that he will always be loved by God and us, healthy relationships, and we want to keep his his heart soft, um, and um, we want this all to come from a good relationship with God. Um, and I have a verse to read, Luke 2, 51. Jesus went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. His mother cherished cherished every word in her heart. We think all these things that we want for him are kind of summarized in Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Uh, yeah, we just we want him to be like a tree and, and God to be the stream of water and our family and all of you guys to be just kind of the ground that he builds his roots into. Um, we want him to have good examples and mentors among among all of you guys and our family, and we want him to discover who God made him to be. And, and just to live fearlessly in that identity. So thank you guys all for standing with us in this journey. All right, thanks guys. So there are two kind of formal questions that we always ask of parents um, that are kind of making this commitment. Um, so the first is Brooks and Shannon. Do you acknowledge that Jack is a gift from God, and do you dedicate and entrust Jack to the Lord, the one who gave him to you? Do you commit as parents to raise him in the training and instruction of the Lord and to provide a home that reflects the love and grace of Jesus Christ? Um, so there's also something else that's kind of become a tradition here. Um, the wonderful people in Scraps to Raps. I'm going to go ahead and invite Jennifer, and I think... Yeah, I'm not sure who's all coming up with Jennifer, but I'm going to invite them up, and they're going to share a little bit about kind of this little ministry that they have. Good morning. I'm happy to be here on behalf of the women of Scraps to Raps and also your church family. Um, I thought you were going to ask us to stand. Is that later? Okay. Okay. 
but we will sh show our support and encouragement of love for you and baby Jack as you begin your parenting journey. And there's two things I'd like to share with you, but you're already all over it. But I wrote my notes, so I'll just share them anyway. Um, how important it is to introduce him to Jesus, that he would know a saving and trusting knowledge of the one who loves him the most. And hopefully Jack will be on fire for Jesus. You get it, on fire. Baby Jack, Jack, anyway. <laughs> um, and the second thing, that he would know the unconditional love of his parents and family, and that he'd always be assured and confident through the good times and the bad times, the easy and the hard times, he would know how much he's loved and treasured. And if you guys ever look over here in the corner, see, there's Gary right now, no chin on the babies, you guys are off to a really good start. So Nadia has a gift to present to you from the women of Scraps to Raps. Go ahead. Good job. Thank you. Okay, so this this is this is the part that I'm putting to you as the congregation, and I would really encourage you to um, to take it seriously. Um, speaking as a parent, um, and I'm sure I can speak for a lot of the other parents that are here, not just of young kids but even of older kids. This is a commitment that we as a congregation need to take seriously, and it's a commitment that is it's a long-term commitment, and it means something, and it means a lot to prospective parents that are standing here. Um, Granted, you know, it's been a number of months now since Jack has come, but, and, you know, they, I'm sure Brooks and Shannon have kind of settled into some semblance of routine, maybe, but <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> it can be at times. And having a church family that has committed to standing alongside them and helping in practical ways, whether that might be babysitting or, or just, you know, there's lots of different ways that can look, but also in terms of prayer and, and different ways of support that we can come alongside them um, as they raise Jack. Um, it's really important. So um, I guess my question to the congregation, and I would ask you to stand in recognition of this, um, will you commit to accept the responsibility of praying for these children, in this case just one, Jack, and supporting and encouraging and praying for each of these parents, Brooks and Shannon? And... You're already standing. So I know it was, I think it was my first time up here. Um, I'm not sure who I'm, if I don't remember correctly who was leading at that point, but I remember being challenged as the parent standing here to look out and to recognize that each and every person that is standing is committing to walking this path with you. And it means a lot. And, um, and we're not taking it lightly. So um, I'm going to go ahead and invite um, any family that's here, or friends that would like to come up, we're going to just have some time of prayer over the couple, Brooks and Shannon and baby Jack, and then um, we're going to, I think Anna's going to play us a song while we do that, and then I'll uh, close in prayer at the end of that. So anyone from the family or friends that would like to come up and pray with the family, you're welcome to do that. The rest of you can all sit down too if you would like. But just be, I would encourage you to be praying for them as well during this time.
Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for Brooks and Shannon and baby Jack. I thank you for being with them through the long, long walk of pregnancy for them and for bringing Jack safely here and um, for this commitment that they are making in front of everyone here that um, of their intentions for Jack and their desires for Jack, that he would come to know you and his life, that he would um, strive to find his own relationship with you, but also, and importantly, Heavenly Father, just the recognition that they as parents are um, they're asking for your help and your guidance in leading Jack, and um, just thank you for the family that's here and um, for the, the love and, and the joy that um, Jack has brought and just that they're, that they're showing to Brooks and Shannon by being here and supporting them. And Heavenly Father, I just ask that, um, as, that we as a congregation can find real and tangible ways to come alongside Brooks and Shannon to support them in this journey, but that most importantly, Heavenly Father, that um, every second of every day that they would feel your presence there, um, guiding them um, to what you have for Jack. And we just thank you so much for your just the promise, the promises that you made to us, and, and specifically with regards to how much you care for and love little children. And um, I just thank you for this opportunity to come before you this morning and to um, make this commitment. Pray your blessing on them as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. I'm loud today. Thank you for joining us this morning as we, just like every week, we come together, we gather as a bought and redeemed family of Jesus and encourage each other on in that relationship with him. And in every aspect and area of life that we're in and walking through and facing, and yeah, it's just a blessing for parent-child dedications. We've been blessed to have a lot of them over the years, and uh, this is the first time probably in about 10 years that there's now the Martin up here, so that's a, that's a new season of, of life. Uh, Brad, you're falling behind, um, and Kyle, <laughs> Kyle and Miriam too, we won't let you off the hook, so... Um, but yeah, thank you all for, for gathering and, and standing to being willing to support in prayer young parents as we seek to raise our children to know Jesus. And yeah, it's truly a blessing to gather together. As that bought and redeemed family of, family of God, family of Jesus, and as we, if we're to live as the family of God, we have a lot to learn about heavenly kingdom-minded relationships, living as part of the kingdom of God that Jesus came to bring about. And as we wrestle with that, our first priority is our relationship with our Heavenly Father, our relationship with Jesus. It is that relationship that strengthens and informs and guides any other relationship and any other aspect of our lives. He is our source and our guide and our strength, but how often do we just treat Connecting with God as a secondary thing or as something we just spend a couple minutes of every day, hopefully, or if we get to it. But everything we do flows out of that relationship with our God. In Sunday school this morning, Emily mentioned a quote by D.L. Moody that said, Jesus didn't teach, something along the lines of, Jesus didn't teach his disciples to preach, he taught them to pray. He taught them to pray, to connect with the Father, and everything flowed out of that. So that will be our focus this morning, is connecting with our Father in heaven. But what does a relationship with our King, who's not physically present here on the earth now, look like? What's that look like? We know what a relationship with your spouse or your children or whatever looks like, but what does it look like with our King, who's not physically present? How do we spend time building that relationship and of course, the, the basic answer is the three areas of recognizing the leading of the Holy Spirit, because that's how God is active now in the present, spending time in God's Word, the Bible, and through prayer. And this morning, we're going to focus on and break down the prayer aspect of our relationship with God, because through prayer, we ask for understanding of God's Word, and we learn His character that will guide us as we seek to understand the Holy Spirit's guiding and instructing. And so how do we build relationships? The best way to build a relationship with, with anyone 
is by talking and by listening, mostly listening. Just like baby Jack, as he grows, he's going to learn his parents' voice, voices as he already is. So we're going to start with the overview Jesus gives us for prayer in Matthew 6. And then look a little more at the heart of relational prayer, or prayer with a focus on connecting with God. There's many aspects, many areas of prayer, but we're going to focus on specifically prayer as talking with our Father in heaven, building that relationship, that connecting, that trust with him. But first, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for your presence here with us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, you promised us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so we acknowledge that you are here and moving in this room, in this community, in this state, in this nation, in this world. Lord, we, we confess that so often we don't acknowledge that you are alive and moving and active, but we want to do that this morning. And Lord, I ask that you will open our hearts to what you want to teach us and invite us deeper into through your word. Lord, let us desperately cry out to you, acknowledging we need you in every area and aspect of our lives. Lord, that if we are to do anything for you, we have to first be with you and learn to know you. Lord, let us hunger and thirst for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we'll, be, we'll start in Matthew 6 this morning. It says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So we're going to start with these verses about what not to do in prayer. Because when we get to Luke 18, on first read, these two sections seem to con contradict. But as we dive into it and tear it apart, we'll see how they're talking about two different areas. And so this, this focuses on the pagan habit of making these these murmurings of these magic words are the same thing they want over and over and over again, thinking if they say it the right amount of times or just uh, so many times that their so-called God would hear them and would grant them what they wanted. And this passage on prayer is in the middle of Jesus giving his longest teaching on what living as a member of God's kingdom looks like and is totally counter to the culture that they were in at that time. It's showing a different way to live, a different way to go about life with God as the focus. And Jesus here is contrasting this pagan practice with murmuring, with talking to God like you would your father. So in verse 9, it says, In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as we start to break down each part of this, the Lord's Prayer, a very famous prayer where Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, I want us to think about this prayer as an outline, a structure to build our prayer, our connecting with God around, because otherwise we can turn this into the very thing that Jesus just warned about, of these magic words that we repeat over and over and over again to be heard. But instead it's a structure of how we connect and how we approach our God in heaven. And viewing this as an outline has been huge for me, helping me to focus on acknowledging God in each area of my life, and different things we're facing. So this model for our prayer begins with the big picture, talking to God as our Father. And maybe that sounds so basic to us now, but this was huge and groundbreaking to the Jews who heard it at the time. But God was this, they had the temple, very special ways they could approach God and only on certain days and after they'd done the right sacrifices. So talking to God like a, like a father, like a very close family relation was earth-shaking. 
But that's that relationship God wants to have with us. And then it moves to glorifying our holy God, reminding our heart of his majesty and authority over our lives. So we approach him like we would our father or parent, but also acknowledge his authority over our lives, that he is holy. He is perfect. He's worthy to be worshipped and completely trustworthy. And then after focusing on our right relationship with God, looking to him as holy and our creator, we then move to asking for his perfect kingdom, his presence to be with us. We long to be with our Father in heaven. For his presence and loving rule to come, putting our fallen world back together and asking for his perfect will to be done here like it is in his presence. See, the kingdom of God is here now through Jesus coming, dying on the cross, rising again. The kingdom's here now, and yet not fully complete. We live in this kingdom already here and still coming in its fullness. And in the meantime, we're asking God to put us to work, being part of building his kingdom here. God is, we know this, but God is alive and he's moving, he's doing things. We see 13 people in our community wanting to be baptized. They're repenting. They're coming to God. We see the the revival happening in Kentucky and spreading. Like the Lord is doing things. He's He's at work. And we want to be a part of what he's doing. And we do that by spending time with him, by connecting. So he moves on in this, as I say, kind of this outline of prayer. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So as we keep moving through this outline, we shift from the big picture to specific details. We ask for our personal needs and we can be specific here. We can say, provide us our daily bread, provide us our daily needs and in doing that, we acknowledge where they come from. They come from our Father in heaven and we give him glory in that for having simple things as breakfast and lunch and what all the basic needs we need, we know they ultimately come from God. And then in asking for forgiveness, as we seek very connected, not separated, as we seek to live out showing forgiveness to those around us. And in doing that, we're reminding ourselves of how much we're forgiven, how much we need God's forgiveness. And in light of that, sins against us are so minor in light of all that we've been forgiven. And it puts it in perspective. And that's the part of prayer where I spend most of my time. I'm reminded of all I've been forgiven and daily wrestle with things, with ways I've been offended and need to forgive others. And it's hard because I want them to pay. Like, we want them to pay. Like, it hurt. It was a sin against us. But when we're reminded that others want me to pay, and I deserve to pay, and I've been forgiven. It helps us to model Jesus to others. And it draws me closer to God and helps me to live in better relationships with those around me. And it all stems from that closer relationship with our Father in heaven. And verse 13 And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This prayer ends with asking for help to stay faithful and a reminder again that God is God. Again, this is an area to get specific, asking God to lead us through areas that we know are a temptation for us. Asking God to give us strength to stay true to him like Jesus did through his temptations. We're not to go through this life alone. He is there and he wants to provide a way of escape for us to guide us as we face temptation and trials. And we want to stay true to God because the kingdom, the power, and the glory are all his. He's on the throne, wants the best for his creation, for his people, And we want to stay faithful and be a part of his kingdom building. So this concept of looking at the Lord's Prayer as an outline has radically changed my prayer life and how I connect with God. So it doesn't become just those 
words we magically say and good things happen. But now I want to shift from this big picture outline and look at a passage that gets to the heart that God desires for us to approach him with in Luke 18. In verses 1 through 5, it says, Then he spoke a parable to them, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So in the beginning of this passage, we get a clue to the message in this parable so we don't lose heart. So we keep connecting with God in prayer. And so this parable Jesus uses is set in the courtroom where a woman continues to come seeking justice, seeking things to be set right. And finally, the judge wears down and gives her what she wants so she'll stop pestering him and bothering him. In the past, when I've read this, first off, it strikes me as the opposite of what Jesus said, where we read at the beginning in Matthew 6. Don't pray with these vain repetitions. Don't just keep asking and pestering. And again, these vain repetitions were how the pagans in that culture would would go about praying. But in this next section, Jesus shows how our God views us not as annoying subjects, but as his own chosen sons and daughters. It says, Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Jesus says that this man who doesn't care what God or people think, will give this woman justice. So of course, your God, your Father in heaven, who chose you, who chose you, who were, most of us were Gentiles, we were not his original chosen people, but through Jesus we are chosen, we are his people. He brought us in to his family. He will hear us. He wants us to come as his own children We are his sons and daughters. Approach him like you would your parent. It's about relationship and connecting our hearts with our Heavenly Father. And don't lose heart. He will answer in his time. But approach him with your needs and your compassion for others. Whatever moves our hearts, that's a gift from him. Persistently working out a relationship with God through prayer, sharing our desires and compassion, whatever moves our heart with Him. Church, we can't lose heart in connecting or with needing God. So often we can get comfortable and not recognize how desperately we need Him every day for every small aspect of our life. So if we get complacent, And we forget that desperate need for Jesus. When he comes again, will he really find faith on the earth? And we'll wrestle with some of those thoughts some more next week. But when we grab hold of the heart of prayer coming to God as our loving Father, and take that back to the outline in Matthew 6, we see how each aspect of the Lord's Prayer is a part of our relationship with him. When we say, Father, hallowed be thy name. God, you're my holy Father. I'm coming to you as your child. Your kingdom come. God, let me be in your presence and part of what you're doing. Your will be done. Help me to trust that you want the best for me and for your people. Give us this day our daily bread. We have needs, but we know that where they, those needs are provided from is you. You are our source. And forgive us again, tied with, as we forgive others. God, you've chosen to forgive us. Let me be more like you in forgiving others. And lead us not into temptation, 
and deliver us. Help us to stay true to you. It's all about connecting in relationship with our creator, living as we were designed in relationship with him, submitted to his authority. So worship team, if you would join me. And as they do that, my challenge for us this week is to connect or to reconnect with our Heavenly Father, just not overlooking that everything we do comes out of that relationship with Him, comes out of that source of our Heavenly Father. So don't overlook that time we spend with Him. It's crucial. And it's more important than what we do. We need to remind ourselves of who we are, His chosen sons and daughters. He loves us beyond what we can understand and truly desires the best for us. But following Jesus takes trust. And we can't build a trust with someone we don't get to know. So let's go to Jesus with our fears, our needs, our hopes, and our emotions. Knowing that he loves us and will come through, maybe not in the way we expect or when we want, but in his own perfect way and timing. And if you're here this morning and you've never submitted to Jesus as Lord, know that he desires you to come to him. He's moving. He wants us to live as members of his family. He desires you to come home like a father who's lost his son and each and every day wakes up looking out the window to see if he's come home. Go to him in prayer. Submit your life to him, trusting that he loves you and wants to be with you for eternity. Thank you so much for choosing us, for dying on the cross in our stead, so that we can come to you like our Father, as you are our Father in heaven. Lord, we love you. Lord, help us to be desperate for you. We can't do anything that will make a difference in eternity without you. Lord, we know how much we've been changed and how much hope we have and have found in you. And Lord, we desire that for so many others. And Lord, we know you are alive and active and moving and you are doing something special. Lord, we need you. Help us to acknowledge you in every area, every little detail of our life. As we go from here and we eat lunch, we know that it comes from you. As we forgive others, When it's hard, we can do that because you've forgiven us of so much more. So, Lord, let us come to you with everything and in everything and do everything out of our relationship with you so that the world can see that you are alive and active and that you are moving and building your kingdom and you want all who don't know you to come home and to find salvation for eternity with you. You don't desire any to go to hell, but they will without you. And so, Lord, bring them home. So, Lord, I pray for your people this week. Let us go and live as members of your kingdom, as your children, being in tune with your spirit to what you're doing, to be a part of your kingdom building. We love you, Jesus. There are so many that desperately need you, and we are among them. Come and have your way in us, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.